we are going to go ahead and go live. And we are live now. Praise the Lord. Well, anybody joining, I want to welcome you to the Bible study. And uh, by the grace of God, this thing will turn out right and the Lord will do something with it. Let me try this. From the camera. Here we go. That should get in there. All right. Now, somehow, if you can get on my page, you ought to be able to follow along. That's what we'll be seeing live. And I will also try to go here. And that should bring up right there. Can you guys see that Bible screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yes. See if I can get that out of my way. There we go. All right, let's turn to John uh, chapter 4 first. And I will not be able to see my share screens. All I can see is Bible right now. So, um, let me know if anything goes wrong. Okay. John chapter 4, the Bible says right here, And Jesus said unto her, Believe me, the hour cometh in which uh, ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And that is exactly what I plan on uh, taking a look at. And we're going to lay the foundation this time. Uh, the foundation, the introduction into this study. All right. The Lord wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. Amen. Not just however anybody wants to worship him. And not however it seems like to fit the day and the age. Amen. God never intended uh, for his church to be following what's acceptable of the world. Amen. And to be changing his word and um, putting it and the methods of which it's going to be preached and everything to suit the age. Amen. That was never God's uh, purpose, period. And um, the Bible says that, beloved, be, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Rather, they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereby ye have heard that it should come, and now already is it in the world. And ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. But we are of God. And he that knoweth God heareth us. And he that is of God heareth us. Hereby know we, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at uh, right here uh, in this study. Uh, the Bible tells us to try the spirits. Rather, they are of God. Amen. And it gives us even right here uh, a few ideas of how to be able to do that. All right. You know, it's the spirit of error right off the bat if it's of false doctrine. Amen. So it says anyone that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh. 
amen, is not of God. That's a straight up false doctrine. Amen. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. The word was manifest in the flesh, the Bible says. And um, so let's take a look at a reference right there for that. Amen. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doubting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Amen. And it, it don't matter what somebody thinks they know, and... um. You know what I mean? They are proud knowing nothing if they if they're not, you know, if the doctrine that they're teaching is not according to godliness. Amen. That's all that there is to it. Amen. And um you know, you got a lot of people today preaching uh salvation. Amen. That's not going to produce any forms of godliness. Amen. Any type of godliness. As a matter of fact, it's going to just give people an excuse to live an ungodly life because, hey, no matter what, you know, that little prayer I prayed saved me and I'm going to heaven. And I just got to come to church once a week, you know, for a couple hours and pay God off and I'm going to be okay. Uh, that's the spirit of there. Amen. And, um, you know, and it's concerning doctrine. What we got right there. And if they got false doctrine, you know what? They're destitute of the truth. You can't have false doctrine, amen, and a wicked, lascivious uh, type of way of presenting what you want to try to call Bible doctrine and be in the spirit of truth. That's all that there is to it, amen. Godliness with contentment's great gain. Amen. And it's high time that uh, this world uh, begin to realize that and pull back from the spirit of air and gain control of their mind again. Amen. And get back to the old past and worship God in spirit and in truth. All right. Looking at uh, verse five right here. We got uh, mm -hmm. there of the world. Therefore, speak they the world and the world heareth them. Okay. And so the spirit of air uh, is going to be identified by worldliness, without a doubt. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lusts thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. So, you know, by worldliness, amen, it says right there that if you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. And I guarantee you that you're not worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. If you still have have this great desire mm -hmm. and uh, then you think that, you know, something compels you that you ought to uh, justify, you know what I mean? The works of your flesh and the love of your, of this world somehow as a Christian. Amen. The Bible says right there, if any man love this world, the love of the father is not in him. Amen. And so love is not just an emotion. Love is an action. Amen. Love is, um, you know, love's a choice and charity is an action. I heard a preacher put it like that. That's a good way to explain it. Amen. But this this world, when it's talking about the world, is it's talking about the worldly system. Amen. And the things of this world. The Bible says that greater love hath no man than that he should lay down his life for his friend. Amen. And um, so love also has to do with uh, what you're going to sacrifice to attain. What are you going to strive to have? What are you? What is it that you are exerting your energy towards and you're willing to sacrifice other things for? What is it that you love? Amen? Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. 
And greater love hath no man than that he should lay down his life for his friend. And so it's about high time, amen, that the church begin to try to lay down their life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, um, you know, there's things that you're going to have to fight in this flesh. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. That's not of the Father, but it's of the world. That's what man got when they ate that of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, all they had before that was the knowledge of good. All they had before that was clean, pure fellowship with God in the garden. Amen. And they got deceived. Oh, you're going to have power. Amen. A pride of life ploy. Amen. And uh, he came to the woman when the man was away. He should have been taking care of his garden. Amen. That woman um, should have been taught by Adam that you don't listen to that devil. You don't have a conversation with him. Amen. Hey, we're going to obey God. We're going to serve him. Period. And, um, but these things were not dealt with, but that's a whole nother message. Amen. But honestly, um, those things that are in your heart will come out later and they'll cost you much. They'll deceive you. I guess we'll go ahead and preach that a little bit. Amen. And so the, the serpent starts speaking and then what's starting to come out of the woman's mouth, she starts stretching it. You shall not look at it nor touch it lest you die. That's not. Amen. The Lord never said that. He just said, don't eat it. And um, so that's the type of stuff that long before your sin or your old man is going to cost you something, you're going to probably hear it coming out of your mouth and you're going to hear your flesh whispering your deceitful heart. Amen. Uh, and whispering into your ears long before it ever happens. So keep an eye out for that type of stuff and um, don't let it happen. Another thing is, don't be looking at that tree. Don't be playing around under it. You know what's going to happen? You're going to end up eating it if you do. So we try the spirits, rather they are of God. False doctrine, amen. Pride of life, spiritual pride, amen. You can type these things up with um, the first parable, uh, really, that Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how shall you understand all parables? And that's the parable of the of the man who sowed the seed. And the seed was the word of God. Amen. And Satan cometh immediately and tried to steal the seed which was sown. And so you got false doctrine. Amen. If the devil sees a seed get pointed in somebody before they're actually going to get to a point in which they're going to repent. You know what he's going to do? He's going to send a false prophet over there. He's going to try to steal that seed. He's going to try to not let it produce a Christian. Amen. You hear the word of God and then uh, God begins to uh, send increase upon it. And that seed begins to germinate in your heart. Amen. But you know what? It's supposed to grow. It's supposed to produce something. Amen. And if it does produce something, it's something that God made grow and fruit's going to come forth from it. That's all that there is to it. Amen. You couldn't convince me that the people on the stony ground or the people on the the thorny ground are actually saved. You could never convince me that. Uh, these people were convinced, amen, by the devil before they ever got saved that they were saved. And then when they prayed that little prayer, amen, the devil told them, hey, it's okay. No matter what, you're going to heaven. So just come to church on Sunday. You're okay. It's all good. Hey, listen to me. Don't you like what this guy's saying? It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It makes provision for your flesh. Yeah, listen to me. Look, it's really about, you know what I mean? You're saved, but, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Pride of life, amen. False doctrine intercepted the seed. That's what the devil does. Delusions of focus, amen. Gets you to be focusing on the wrong things. Gets you uh, so entangled in the affairs of this life, amen. Stony ground. Uh, seductions of lust, amen. Thorny ground. Um, many a things, amen. Uh, try the spirits. It's not hard when you're looking at those things to know that that's the spirit of error and not the spirit of truth. Uh, that is, if you got the Bible to go by anyways.
but if you're still your own god and uh, trying to weigh stuff out yourself then um i guess you're just going to determine what truth is right but i assure you the lord has outlined it in the bible and, and we'll be taking a look at some of those things amen we're to we're we are to uh discern and to try the spirits amen um, familiar verses, beloved, when I gave you all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, that it was needful to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. There, uh, the spirit of truth ought to be contended for, and it ought to be preached, and the spirit of error ought to be stood against. That's all that there is to it. Amen. Uh, we are to... Um, you know, fight the good fight of faith, like it says right here, and lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession among many witnesses. Amen. Um, you know, I give you charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Jesus Christ, who uh, before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that you keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time shall show. Amen? He will. Who is the only potentate? Amen? Who's the man? The man, Christ Jesus. Amen? It ain't you. It ain't your Hollywood stars. It ain't Donald Trump. Amen? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to show himself, amen, that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords one day, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto you, whom uh, no man has seen nor can see, of whom be honor and power everlasting amen the only one that got that got the closest amen to actually seeing god was moses and he just seen his uh his tail end amen and uh when he did his his vision was changed for the rest of his life amen uh great things amen that the bible has and uh we got we do need to set our foundation for this study though I like to preach a lot of these things. The Bible says, I charge you, therefore. Amen. That's something that maybe we should listen to. Amen. If the Bible tells us to uh, try the spirits and, and to stand against principalities and powers and in heavenly places. And he says, I charge you, therefore. Amen. That, um, that you're going to preach the word and stand against these things. Then that's something that we ought to do. Amen. And not back down because of what our family thinks or because of what the world thinks or anything like that. Amen. Uh, but we ought to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life and expose the things of darkness so that people, hey, they don't want to listen. Hey, somebody will. And even if they don't, amen, God charged us and, and said to contend for the faith, amen, and to try the spirits rather they are of God, and to discern these things, and, and to stand for the, and, and to let Christ shine in your hearts, amen, and in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, to be standing for Him. So even if nobody wants to listen, amen, God still charged us to do it. And he expects us to do it, amen. And uh, by his grace, we will. And if we obey it and we step forward to the battle, amen, he'll fill us with his spirit. He'll help us, amen. We'll be strong in the grace which is in Christ Jesus when we actually step up as a good soldier to the battle. The Bible says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and dead at his appearing in kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, reprove, and exhort with all long suffering. Amen. The Lord says, hey, I charge you to just go out there and preach. Rather it's acceptable, rather it's not. Hey, rather you got freedom and rather you don't. It doesn't matter. We got freedom to be able to preach on the street right now. Amen. But if that freedom's took it away, you know what you got to do? You got to hide in the secret of his presence. You still got to get out there and stand for the truth. You still got to do the things that are going to please God and be obedient to him. And he'll, he'll strengthen you with his grace. Amen. He is able to make all grace abound to your account. And if that means hiding you in the secret of your presence, amen, and preparing a table for you in the midst of your, in the presence of your enemies, he will. Amen. For the time will come and it's now. Amen. That they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. 
and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. Amen? That's what the Apostle Paul did, and that's what he's charging Timothy to do, and that's what God recorded for us, amen, to tell us what to do. They're turning their ears away from the truth. These spirits need to be discerned. This darkness needs to be exposed. Amen. God needs some people who, whether it's in season or not, amen, they're going to grab a hold of all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. So they've got the spirit of truth and they're going to hold it forth and preach the word. Amen. Hey, no matter what anybody thinks about it, I tell you, it's going to get interesting. Amen. Because our time, amen, to be offered, just like Paul said right here, is going to be at hand one day. He says, for I'm now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Amen. And don't tell me you love the Lord's appearing. Amen. And you're looking forward for him coming back and you're not going to stand for him. It would honestly be an honor. Amen. To lose your head for the Lord Jesus Christ. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. We got right here. Here's another glimpse. Amen. Of what we're facing today. Now the spirit speaketh expressively. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron, and forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving in them that believe and know the truth. Amen. For every creature of God is good. And nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And I might as well throw something in there. Most people don't even know why they're praying when they eat. Amen. But every bit of strength that you have to be able to breathe, operate, and live in this world. Amen. Comes from uh, the food that you are allowed to eat. And so we're sanctifying that onto the Lord. Amen. Uh, we're saying, Lord, everything that comes forth from this, the strength that you give me to breathe, the breath that you give me to breathe, and the food that you've given me to eat, I want it to be sanctified onto your service and to your glory. Amen. It's not just an American custom that you do real quick, uh, flippantly. It is honestly something that you should apply your heart to. And so a man who does not do that is eating things sacrificed onto idols. The thing is, he's the idol. Amen. We're living in a day when they're worshiping the creature more than the creator. Most people's families is their idol. Amen. All their songs sing about, you know, their fornication partner. They just can't live without and their life's so much better now that I got you. Worshiping the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It's the day that we're living in. And the Spirit speaketh expressively, amen, something that we need to listen to in the latter times, amen, that people are going to depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's why this study, amen, we need to be able to understand the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And how is the devil uh, putting these things out here? And how do we stand against them? And, and then, you know what we need to do after that? We need to take a good long look at, at Bible doctrine, and get those things right. Because we're living in a day when everybody says that they're saved. Amen. Uh, but they're speaking lies and hypocrisy. And their conscience is seared with a hot iron. And I wouldn't give most people 10 cents for their salvation. Uh, but let me tell you something. When the Antichrist steps on the scene. They're going to be more than willing to follow him. Amen. And so. We take a look at the great battle. And so. Uh, we got a few more minutes here. Amen trying to lay the introduction hopefully uh, we'll get through it i've got quite a bit i want to do on the introduction but proverbs chapter 7 lays out the great battle and what you're going to see in comparing and i encourage everybody to compare these and i put out a uh, little pamphlet 
that can be printed out so that people can familiarize themselves with this study before they hear me preach it. If you're saved, amen, you got his spirit in your heart crying, Abba, Father. And we both have access by one spirit unto the Father, amen. And all this stuff's right here in the Bible. Uh, I'm not nothing special, and, and nobody else is either. Amen. Uh, if any man thinketh he knoweth anything, he knoweth not anything yet as he ought to know. Amen. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Look into these things. Check out what I'm saying. Amen. And um, look at the great battle. All right. You have the Lord. You have the spirit of wisdom. Amen. And um, speaking in, in the first nine chapters of Proverbs and, and pleading, amen, for the young man to receive wisdom and to seek knowledge and, and with all thy getting, get understanding, amen. And um, you see this whole chapter eight right here is wisdom. The whole thing, every aspect, every verse in here is wisdom. What I want to do is familiarize us with how to use the wisdom from the first nine chapters here first off and to recognize um, the spirit that we are up against. All right, because you're going to see um, the spirit of whoredom, that old spirit of mystery, Babylon, amen, uh, that whorish woman trying to seduce this world and, and the simple ones, amen, right here in chapter seven. But it starts out with the Lord pleading even. Uh, for us to be wise and to understand these things and you really you see the battle in your whole Christian life um, Outlined here in these first nine chapters. You honestly do and uh, by God's grace I'm going to shine some light on that uh, Here in the future. It's going to take us a long time to get through this study. This is not going to be One or two or three or ten studies. Amen. It's going to take several months to get through here. I'm sure um, But we'll just try to let the Lord lead and see where we go. So taking a look at Proverbs chapter 7. My son, receive my words and lay up my commandments within thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of the eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the tables of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee, from the strange woman and from the stranger with flattereth with her words. Amen. That's the devil right there. And um, we're going to see as we proceed through this how how the devil uses um, Leviathan, Delilah, and Jezebel to seduce God's people. Amen. In different ways. And Leviathan, you know what I mean, as a spirit of pride. And Delilah is a seducing spirit. She put Samson to sleep, didn't she? And um, and Jezebel as a manipulative uh, spirit, controlling spirit, uh, destroying spirit. Amen. And um, we'll take a look at a few of those things. But look at right here how he says, uh, take my law as the apple of thine eyes. Amen. That's what, you know what Job said. He said, I esteemed his words more necessary than my daily food. He's saying, take wisdom and knowledge and instruction in the Word of God very seriously. Hey, for a soldier back in the day, understanding and using that sword was his life. Amen. And we need to understand that it's just the same today. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, um, you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Amen. And the Bible says, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And um, so take my commandments and live. Amen. Hey, you won't be in a spirit of death. You won't be defeated. You won't be uh, bound by the bondage and love of this world. Amen. If you take his laws as the apple of your and eye and bind them upon thy fingers. Amen. They will be the works of thy hands. They'll, they'll direct the works of your hands. Everything that you do and accomplish is a work of your hands. Amen. And it comes from the fact of that God fed you. And so it goes back to why are you eating and why are you living? And what is the apple of thine eye? Amen. How is it going to guide you? And uh, write them upon the table of thine heart. Don't just uh, take the notes down and um, put them you know, there, maybe look at them again next week. You know, when God speaks to you about something, you know, what you need to do is stop, 
Stop that preaching message. Do whatever it is. Amen. And ask God to write that on your heart. Amen. You know how it is. You're going to forget it 10 minutes later. Ask God to write it upon your heart. When you pick up the word of God, amen. So Lord, teach me something here and, and write it on my heart that's going to help me to be able to live for you. Amen. So that's uh, that's just some wisdom right there that if people approached the word of God in the spiritual battle like that, amen, uh, they'd be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. The gates of hell would um, would not be prevailing like they seem to today in the church. I mean, they can't. The victory is already ours in Christ Jesus. We just got to appropriate it. Amen. But we need to take these things seriously. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister and understanding thy kinswoman. There you go. Hey, it's more important than my family. You know what I mean? It's more important than anything else. When my father and mother forsake me, Psalms 27, David said, then the Lord will take me up. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord. If you have some family that that's saved that that you can fellowship with, that's a blessing. Amen. Not everybody has that. But say unto wisdom and understanding. Amen. You're my family. Amen. You're really, honestly, the word of God. Amen. And the wisdom of God and, and the hand of God. That's all I got. Amen. And then whatever befalls you, you'll do all right. Amen. Uh, that you may that may keep thee. From the strange woman. So it's very important, amen, to be kept from this strange woman, which we will take a look at here in a minute. Look at Proverbs chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the, in the places of the path. She crieth at the gates, at entering of the, of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, do I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak unto you excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination unto my lips. Amen. So wisdom's crying. Amen. So we're living in this world where God's not making you believe this and he's not making you believe that. Amen. But wisdom's crying out and understanding's putting forth her voice. Amen. And she's standing there in the top of high places and in the ways of the path. Amen. And crying in the gates of the city. Amen. Hey, you got street preachers out there saying, hey, repent and turn to the Lord. Amen. The last days are upon us and uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And, and saying to people, turn at my reproof. Amen. And that's what it's doing. It's crying unto the men to be men. Wisdom's crying unto the women. Amen. To be women. Wisdom's crying unto the church. Amen. To be Christians and to submit to the will of God. Amen. And to believe the excellent things that are coming out of the Lord's mouth. Amen. And let wickedness be an abomination unto your lips. Amen. And love the truth and hold it forth in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And so we've got the woman right here. And what I'm going to show you, I will maybe not have enough time so what i will do is show i'm going to read through here and then we're going to probably have to close we've got about six minutes left all right but we are going to see next time as we come in here and that's what these notes are right here in luke um thank you for a brother amen that uh that shared those with me and um Right here, we're going to see this woman, but we're going to see how it is indeed a spirit. Maybe we'll have time to take a look at that real quick. All right, but it is a spirit that we're standing against. We're not just some kind of spooky uh, tin foil on our heads uh, type of people that think everything's a spirit. You really are in a spiritual battle. And as a matter of fact, you're probably more spirit than you are physical. You got a body and a soul and a spirit. Amen. That's two thirds spiritual, buddy. And um, so we need to understand the spiritual. For I looked at the window in my house, and I looked through the casement, and behold, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near the corner, near her corner. And he went to, the, to her house. Amen? 
Watch out for Delilah. And uh, in the twilight, and in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the entire of a harlot, and subtle in heart. She is loud and stubborn, and her feet abideth not in her house. Now is she without, and now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him, and kissed him. And with an impunitent face saith unto him, said unto him, I have peace offerings. With me this day have I paid this day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I found thee. And I have decked my bed with coverings and tapestry, with carved works and with fine linen of Egypt, watch out for Egypt, and have performed my bed, watch out for Jezebel's bed, with mirth and aloe and cinnamon, amen, come, let us take our fill until the morning, let us solace ourselves with love, let us pay attention to us, let us take care of our best life now, it's really about us, right, for the good men is, is not at home, and he is gone on a long journey, and he hath taken a bag of money with him, and will come home at the day appointed. And with much fair speech she caused him to yield, and with the flattering of her lips she forced him. And he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, and as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dark strike through his liver, as a bird hasteneth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Amen? Let's take a look at a few things here. Looking over here at an unclean spirit, all right? I believe this was Legion. This is the account in Luke. And he went forth to the land, and there met him. You see that? There met him out of the city a certain man that had devil long time, and wear no clothes, and abode not in any house, but in tombs. Does that sound s similar to something that we just read? Amen. She went out and met him. Amen. And um and also Amen abode not in the house. Verse 11, she abode not in the house. Interesting, amen. How this is going to line up with this. And when Jesus and when he saw Jesus, he cried and fell down before him and with a loud voice, "What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God the most high? I beseech thee torment me not." And so we have a loud voice. She is loud and stubborn, and her feet abideth not in the house. Amen. People that are filled with devils have sure have a lot of characteristics with what we just read in Proverbs chapter 7. For he, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oft times it had caught him. And she caught him. Amen. And and he had bound him with chains and fetters. And broke his bands and was driven with the devil into the wilderness. Amen. And so she caught him. You see that? And kissed him. And with an impenitent face saith unto him. Bound with, um, with chains. Take a look at the end of Proverbs chapter 5 right here. Amen. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly shall he go astray. Amen. Spiritual bondage. In uh, Second Peter, it says, Of whom a man is overcome of the same, is he brought into bondage. Amen. And uh, that's going to be about it for this time. And so we're going to go ahead and um, end this right there. Amen. And we're, we're going to take a little break, and then we will get into our... Um, our podcast. We thank everybody for coming by.